Let us make man in our image. So, there are how many gods? God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. This verse, which stands as an embarrassment to monotheists, occurs right there in the opening pages of the Bible. To explain away this unexpected use of plural pronouns, believers have invented several hypotheses. 1. Polytheists believe that several gods collaborated in making the first humans. So, no problem except that the Bible affirms elsewhere that there is only one Creator God. 2. Mormons teach that two former humans, who have become gods, copulated to give birth to the humans on earth. So, no problem, except that the Bible affirms elsewhere that God is eternal and that there will never be another God than He. 3. Some Jews explain that the one God is so great that only a plural pronoun suits his majesty. So, no problem, except that the Bible employs pronouns in the singular for God everywhere else. 4. Some Christians suppose that this verse reveals the Trinity. They are God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, who conspire to create humanity in their image. So, no problem. But for the facts that such language does not occur elsewhere, and the doctrine of the Trinity did not exist in the age when Genesis was written. 5. German scholars have reasoned that this verse is a fragment from an ancient religious myth that one of many redactors copied into an early form of Genesis. So, no problem. Except that no such older text exists, nor would monotheist Hebrews have permitted such a mistake. Sixth, recently, scholars and writers, who have rightly abandoned Darwinist beliefs, feel that Genesis preserves an ancient account of intergalactic travelers who brought their DNA to Earth. So, no problem, except for the fact that neither science nor the Bible presents even a shred of proof for such a thesis. 7. More recently, scholars who have analyzed the most ancient Middle Eastern religious texts in their original languages have proposed another explanation for the plural pronouns in Genesis 1.26. God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. In verse 26, both the subject of the sentence and the verb are in the plural. These are members of the primordial divine council. They include Yahweh, the eternal God, and a number of spirit beings whom Yahweh had created. Of these spirit beings, the book of Job says regarding the creation of the world, When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. However, it was Yahweh alone who undertook to create the first human beings. The Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. Later, these same sons of God became jealous and undertook to corrupt the human race. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of man, and they bore children to them. For their effort, Yahweh has confined the sons of God to hell. The angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains, 
under gloomy darkness, until the judgment of the great day. The fallen divine council members are to be replaced by the true followers of Jesus, the unique Son of God. Those who are considered worthy to attain to that age, and to the resurrection cannot die any more, because they are equal to angels, and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection.